guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. We've got another review for you guys today. This is the E-Flight 1.2 meter P-47 Thunderbolt. It's a Razorback version of the airplane. Really nice representation. Looks really beautiful coming out of the box. Got a lot of nice scale features to it. You know, full retracts. They've got the scale, double segmented doors on the mains. They've got rocket tubes, external tanks, bombs, all of that good detail that, that really make this airplane a true warfighter. Also, you can run 3S or 4S uh, in the system. We're gonna fly both and we'll let you know how it goes and compare the two. Also, this is the bind and fly version that you can get. It comes with a receiver in it. And so, as a part of that, it includes AS3X and it also has the Horizon Hobbies safe technology. We're gonna touch on that a little bit here, but I'm thinking I may do a full video on just the safe technology to give you guys some pointers on how to set that up uh, and how to utilize it best if you're still learning. So let's get this airplane together. We'll let you know how it goes and then we're gonna take it out to the field, get some flights on it, and we will report back to you. So let's go. Here's the fully assembled P-47 and I will say I really do like the looks of the airplane. You know the P-47 is a classic shape of just pure power and they've done a great job characterizing the airplane. It's got that nice wide gear stance too, you know with the dual segmented doors which is really cool. The silver finish, it looks really nice uh, but there is some foam texture to the airframe. Not too bad though, nothing more than I would normally expect. Assembly I think only took about five to ten minutes as there really are only three steps. Install the horizontal stab with two screws, install the wing with four screws, and then hook up and bind the radio. It really is that simple. There are no issues at all during assembly. I think getting the radio sorted out took longer than actually putting the airplane together. The paint scheme Really cool choice as it represents uh, Howard Curran's Kansas Tornado 2. They've done a nice job in accurately representing the paint scheme, uh, which looks good on the airplane, I think. I especially like the, uh, the angry Mr. Hankey on the fuselage. Okay, it's a tornado, but I mean, you have to admit, there is some resemblance. In the kit, they include a full assortment of external stores, having a set of bombs and rocket tubes, as well as a centerline fuel tank. I thought it was a really nice touch and they look awesome on the airplane. P-47s were workhorses in World War II, so it really gives the airplane a great look with all of that installed. I had some time while waiting to get the airplane to the field and the uniform finish just needed something extra, so I decided to do a little airbrush weathering. I'm putting together a separate video for that, but in short, I airbrushed some Alclad dark aluminum on some of the different panels to get some color variation on that natural metal finish and then used some very thinned out black for the rest of the shading and stains. A warbird like this, it's got to be dirty, but when it comes to weathering, I find that less is more. Uh, so keep that in mind. Again, I'll be covering the weathering in a separate video, so be sure to subscribe to get that when it's posted. And I have additional videos planned for weathering as well. Now in setting up the airplane, and this being the bind and fly version here, uh, there are two distinct procedures for enabling or disabling the safe select technology. Uh, this airplane is a great kind of next level airplane, and so the safe select is there to help those that may not be as comfortable flying warbirds yet. So let's say for a maiden, you have it selected on, it will limit you from rolling or pitching the airplane over on its back. In setting up the airplane, if you want it off, then simply bind the airplane normally, keeping the bind plug in place 
the whole time during the bind procedure. However, if you want the safe select on, and then you start the procedure normally, but prior to selecting bind on the transmitter, uh, you remove the bind plug from the receiver. Once powered on, uh, the airplane will then give an indication of the mode it's in during initialization by cycling the surfaces either once for safe select off uh, or twice for safe select on. Now if you plan to use safe select, I highly recommend assigning it to a switch so that you can turn it on and off as desired. To do that, you can simply move the desired switch you want it assigned to five times right after the aircraft establishes link during the bind process. Or uh, you can assign it any other time by cornering both sticks inwards uh, to each other and then flipping the desired switch five times. Then when you use the method where you corner the sticks, you must have your dual rate switches selected such that you are at 100% endpoint travel for all of those channels. Otherwise, it won't work. Now obviously, if you got the plug and play version where you install your own receiver, then yeah, you don't have to worry about any of this. You just plug it in, set it up, and you go. Now, on the control surface setup, if you're not familiar with Warbirds or Warbird Flying, I highly recommend setting up multiple rates on your radio. I'm using a DX18, so I have the ability to assign triple rates. I'll start with the max throw recommended in the manual as my high rate, and then reduce it from there. Uh, also, sometimes it's better to reduce your max travel than it is to add exponential. So keep that in mind, and there's some games you can play there. It's all about that desired feel in the air. Now, ultimately, through flying the airplane, I found that the max rates for the elevator were good. Uh, but I found the ailerons a bit sensitive for my liking, and so I dropped that down to my lowest rate. So here's what I'm using for the control throws. Uh, for elevator, one half inch with 15% expo. For aileron, 7 16 inch up and down with 15% expo. Uh, and then for rudder, 1 inch left and right with 15% expo, it, it mostly there to desensitize the steering. Now for flaps, 7 16 inch mid flap and then full flap at 1.5 inches uh, with about a 10 to 15% down elevator mix, uh, which translates to about 3 32nd inch down elevator with full flaps. Now keep in mind if you're using safe select uh, there is a pitch assigned to the throttle so what that means is for the lower third portion of the throttle you'll get slightly down elevator uh, so if you plan to use that you don't need the elevator mix with the flaps because it kind of takes care of that for you it gives you a nice beautiful descent for a landing now for the cg location they recommend in the manual about 65 millimeters as measured from the leading edge aft at the root uh, this is a really good place to start I did find it a touch nose heavy in the air. It wanted a bit more down elevator in the inverted. So I'm flying the airplane closer to about 68 to 70 millimeters. Now, if you're flying this on three cells, you will have to add nose weight or fly a really large capacity pack. With a 4S 3300 to 3600 pack, the airplane will CG about right, pushing the battery all the way forward. Since I was flying both 3S and 4S for you guys, I taped about three ounces to the 3S battery so that I could swap batteries in and out without any change in the CG. I'm using E-Flight 3S 3200 and their newer Thrust 4S 3200s. A nice thing about the Thrust packs is they have a built-in LED battery charge level indicator. Pretty cool feature, I will say. Now, in flying the airplane, truth be told, I've never seen a P-47 that didn't fly just rock solid in the air. And this E-Flight P-47 is no exception. Real honest flyer in the air and will handle any scale aerobatics you can throw at it. Looks great in the air and really has the presence of a larger model when you see it flying around. On 3S, performance is decent. It's got good speed and vertical, but I found myself flying mostly full throttle on 3 cells, as this gave the airplane good penetration for flying aerobatics. And 4S, however, yeah, it's pretty much insane as the airplane has unlimited vertical and just awesome speed. I found myself flying around 50 to 60% throttle with the 4-cell setup, which gave great maneuvering speed. It'll do a wonderful knife edge, and having the extra power helps the airplane just pull through that really well. I found that the airplane would fall out of the knife edge a bit on 3-cells. Now keep in mind, on 4-cells, it is pulling more current than the ESC is rated for, so for longevity, 
it's probably worth upgrading to about a 70 amp ESC. Well worth the upgrade because the airplane is a blast on four cells. Interestingly, uh, since I was flying mostly full throttle on 3S and partial throttle on 4S, I was getting better flight times on the 4S pack, even though it was pulling more amps at full throttle. So here are a couple short flight videos on both 3S and 4S. The 3S flight will be first, followed then by the 4S flight. If you'd like to see the uncut video of the 4S flight, uh, you can click on the icon in the upper left corner uh, as I have a link to the video there. Check it out guys, and then we'll wrap this up. There we have it, the E-Flight 1.2 meter P-47 Razorback. What a fun little airplane this is. E-Flight has really put together a nicely engineered airplane that goes together great, flies awesome with a ton of really nice features. Plus, with it comes the customer support that you would expect from Horizon Hobby, so you know you're always covered if you have any issues. Also, if you're still new and in the market for a next step airplane, you know, this is an excellent option, especially given that, you know, the bind to fly has that safe technology as a part of it. There are some things to consider when dealing with that safe technology, and I do plan to put together a separate video discussion on just that. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to get that. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this review helpful. As always, I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, with links to everything, so be sure to check that out. As mentioned, I plan to put together a video on the weathering that I did. I also will be putting together a separate discussion on safe and ways to use it, so be sure to subscribe to get those when they post. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you at the field.
What'd you think, man? I like it more on four cells than three cells. Yeah, I figured you would. <laughs> That's the Wolfman style right there. What can I say? Speed and angels. I love them. <laughs>